Two figures made their way down the street. The one in front strode with confidence. The one behind moved with the telltale crawl of a tracked servitor. They stopped at the entrance to a nondescript warehouse opposite a small ecclesiarchy shrine. In the harsh light cast by the lamp above the door, the lead figure was revealed as a man dressed in fashionable clothes, well built with a handsome face. He banged on the door with his staff and, after a short pause, it was opened by a female figure dressed in a full-length ball gown. Her face was hidden by a white mask, fashioned in the form of an elder with a cheek wound, which appeared to still be bleeding. The bottom edge of the mask was curved to channel blood to the chin, which projected forward and allowed the liquid to drip away from her gown. Good evening, Mademoiselle Hero, said the man. Sire Denor, good evening, my father is expecting you, replied the woman, stepping back to allow entry. Her body language shifted subtly as she saw the servitor, and the flow of blood from her mask seemed to increase. Of comparable size to Danor, the servitor's head was covered by a deep hood. Please, follow me, she said, and led the pair further into the warehouse. Behind her, Danor's staff tapped a steady rhythm as it touched each drop of blood which fell from her mask to the floor. The group approached a man naked above the waist and wearing a golden mask modelled on a child's face. He stood behind a desk on which was an object covered with a white cloth. You're late, came a deep voice at odds with the child's visage. My apologies, sire hero, replied Denor with an exaggerated bow. I was unexpectedly delayed. And what's that? asked Hero, pointing at the servitor. Just a servitor. I needed it to collect your payment. Hero's child mask stared intently at Donor, searching for any sign of duplicity. After apparently finding none, he indicated the cloth-covered object on the desk. I have finished your commission, he stated. It was very difficult to source the necessary materials. Denor waited for Hero to say more, but it became apparent that he had finished. May I see it? he asked. Hero nodded at his daughter, who lifted the cloth away from the desk, revealing a mask made from a thin blue metal. Denor could see that the underneath of the mask was different, instead resembling a collection of fibres. The younger Hero donned a pair of cloth gloves and picked up the mask, showing it to Denor. The front of the mask perfectly resembled a nondescript face, the type which would attract no attention and blend seamlessly into the background, the face of a man who wanted to be forgotten and disappear into anonymity. Mamzelle Hero turned the mask over so that the underneath could be seen, taking care to avoid her blood dripping onto it. Denor leaned closer and saw that his earlier impression was correct. The surface was covered in a mass of fine fibres, each one constantly moving. He raised a finger to touch it. Don't, said Hero, causing Denor to pause with his fingertip fractionally above the fibres. Denor looked at Hero, the question unspoken. When this mask touches living flesh, it will attach itself and not let go. Once you put on this mask, you will never be able to remove it. It will grow into your flesh and become a part of you. Your face will become the mask. Excellent, said Danor, straightening up and stepping back. You have fulfilled my commission perfectly. He reached out a hand, and the servitor produced a rolled up document from within its robes. Danor handed it to the older hero, who unrolled it and studied it closely. He nodded to his daughter, who placed the mask back on the desk and wrapped it up within the white cloth. As she handed it over to Denor, she paused. May I ask one thing? She inquired, blood no longer flowing from her mask. Of course, mademoiselle, Denor replied. This mask is extraordinary. Not only does it match precisely the contours of your face, but the materials used in its construction are different. 
My father has spent longer on this product than any other I can remember. Yet the front of the mask is the plainest I've ever seen. No one will look twice at this work of genius. You have a handsome face, sire. Why would you wish to hide it forever behind such a masterpiece of mundanity? Danor smiled, and Mamzel Hero thought it made his face look even more noble. Mamzel, if you want someone to disappear forever, but cannot make them go away, then you need to change them beyond any form of recognition. All masks have the power to transform whilst they are worn, but this mask goes further. Whoever wears it will literally become the character of the mask. They will forever become irrelevant. Remember, warned Hero Senior, this mask is designed for you. It will not fit another. I know, said Denor. Sire Hero, Mamzel Hero, I bid you farewell. He turned and marched away, followed by the servitor. Behind them, the sound of the gentle dripping blood had resumed. In the Ecclesiarchy Shrine opposite the warehouse, the man known as Denor stood in prayer before a statue of the Emperor hung over the altar. A poor copy. The face of the Emperor was worn away. He took that as a sign and made his decision. Turning to the servitor, he lifted its hood off and looked into a face which was identical to his own. The muscles were palsied and the mouth was drooling, but the eyes stared back at him with a wild hatred. He held the mask in front of the servitor and pushed it into place. Goodbye, brother, said Inquisitor Fraun. Hi everyone, Colin here from Cold Open Stories. Thank you so much for listening to this production of a masterpiece of mundanity. Now, if this is your first time tuning in, we produce a wide range of content, including short stories, immersive audio dramas, and narrations like the one you just heard. This story was first published as a winner in our bi-monthly Fast Fiction Contest. If you aren't familiar, Fast Fiction is our unofficial Warhammer 40,000 writing competition built around 1,000 words, one theme, and one winner. You can find the latest contest prompt at coldopenstories.com. A Masterpiece of Mundanity was written by Mark Butterworth and narrated by Bryce Jones. It was published by Cold Open Stories with musical design and production by the hardworking Pathios Productions. If you'd like to find more of their work, check them out on YouTube at Patheos Productions or Instagram at Patheos underscore Productions. Thank you so much for tuning in, and please consider sharing what you've heard in your network. Tag a friend or boost our signal. It's a great way to build community and share stories worth telling.